Hey guys, it's Poppin', Jock Slade here. Welcome back to the channel. I really hope everyone is doing well in these super crazy times. Today, we actually have a pretty exciting one for you for a few different reasons. So this is the Nike ISPA over React, and it is the simplest but most complicated sneaker I've had on this channel in a while, and spoiler alert, I think it looks pretty good. But before we dig into the specifics of everything, let's give the shoe a proper unboxing. By now, I would assume most of you know about ISPA and how they work within Nike. If you do, then this box is probably what you would expect. The funny thing about it, and I'll dig into it a little bit later, is it actually fits perfectly with the shoes and what they represent. I sometimes get comments from a lot of people that don't really like the box, but I know for many sneakerheads, the box is actually a big part of the sneaker experience and the ISPA team really brought this one home. You have the ISPA logo on the top as well as the words improvise, scavenge, protect, and adapt in a few different languages actually. The side panel has some additional graphics that speak to the box being recycled, which works with the philosophy of the shoes as well. There's also a sticker on the side that I believe is the length, width, and height of the shoe box, but I'm honestly not completely sure. The box is almost like a puzzle, I would say. There are so many different pieces and spots of information that may or may not mean anything. So some of it is obvious, like the design in Beaverton sticker, but then you have the sticker on the front of the box that says issue 0 0.01. If anything, I would think that this is the issue 0 0.02 because they've already released an ISBA collection. So I'm assuming this is regarding that this is the first drop of the 2020 collection and that's why it says 0 0.01. Either way, the Nike graphics teams went crazy on this one and it's worth checking out when you actually get your pairs in hand. Now, of course, in the box, we have the shoes wrapped in the normal Nike tissue paper. I was actually hoping that the tissue paper would be a little more popping, but it's not, so it is what it is. Um, I wish they would have continued the storytelling here, but I guess can't get everything that you want in this situation. And then we have the actual shoes. Officially, this is the Nike ISPA Overreact Flyknit or FK. This colorway is known as Light Bone. They also had the Crimson Bolt colorway. Both are currently sold out on sneakers right now, but I have a feeling you may be able to still find pairs if you're crafty with your sneaker searches. Um, pricing was 180, which is a bit steep, but I also get the angle Nike is heading with these, so to bump it up a bit is definitely pushing the boundaries of what we can expect from this division within Nike. And speaking of this division within Nike, let's quickly talk about ISPA. It first launched back in 2018, and it's basically a special program within Nike Sportswear that takes the existing designs and technology and tries to, I would say, interpret them in a different way. They aren't making footwear for athletes per se, but more for people that exist within urban environments. So instead of a shoe that tests the limits of energy return, they take a performance model and modify it to better suit the needs of the people living in the city that are on their feet for an extended period of time. And they add like a few specialized needs like protection from the cold or breathability. All of that is kind of wrapped up in the improvised scavenge, protect and adapt ethos of the name. And you can really see that in the IRL version of this overreact. By now, most of you are familiar with the comfort you get with Nike React, whether you are running or just using it as a casual everyday shoe, which is how I use mine the most. I would say the original React is probably in my top five as far as sneakers I wear the most, especially when I need to just throw something on really quick. For the overreact, you get that same comfort you get from the original, but the ISBA team has expanded and you can see it and feel it, to be honest. The geometries, as Nike calls them, are at least twice the length and width you would get on on the normal react and it gives you a very cushy experience. So the advancement of midsole technology has obviously come a long way in the last five to 10 years and React has seemingly been tapered back, but that is no longer the case and it does come with some consequences. The additional React foam makes the midsole big and bulky to be honest. Uh, not saying that that's a negative, but it does change the shape of the sneaker and give it a wider stance than what we are used to seeing. My personal opinion is that it looks nice, but if you like a slimmer fit that doesn't extrude from the shoe from the toe down, this may not be the right look for you despite the extra comfort that it provides. 
So moving beyond the midsole, we have an exposed React outsole that has key areas covered by rubber. Uh, I remember shooting my first review on the Nike React and how concerned I was about that area being impacted by the ground, but you really don't see it that much. There will be some wearing down of the areas in between, but it's really minimal to be honest. The rubber placement on the overreact is very strategic and even wraps up around the midsole for those that over or under pronate. Uh, I'll report back via Twitter as I wear these more and let you guys know how these actually hold up to some like everyday abuse. Um, one of the most fascinating parts of the shoe though is hands down the upper. Overall, it seems simple and clean, but as you really look closer, you see the many different parts that come together to make it a whole. The theme of the overreact is comfort, and the best way for Nike to execute that vision is to use Flyknit. If you follow the Space Hippie line, you know that Nike used excess yarn and other items to complete the upper of those shoes, and a similar principle is actually being used with this pair. Across the various like shapes and geometries of the shoe, uh, you have this light bone flyknit as the base layer, and above that you have a few different methods being used to provide, um, I would say, a better, a better fit. For instance, because of the flyknit base, the ISPA team provided some structural support through stitching that looks to be covered in a thin plastic. It extends uh, from the midfoot around the heel to serve as a reinforcement, but then it actually extends on the medial side as well. Other areas that have layering to help shape the design include the lacing system. It's a crisscross ribbon that provides the actual lockdown for the shoe and in high pressure areas. Nike has actually included some extra padding over the flyknit to make sure the thin flyknit upper does not develop any hot spots, which are terrible if you're looking for a shoe to wear all day long. The simplicity of the lacing system, which is capped off by a flexible plastic Velcro piece, highlights the, I would say, the out of the box sort of thinking of the shoe, which also demonstrates the complexity of the design as a shoe that looks simple, but is more complicated than we actually think. So borrowing from the ISPA name, the protection on this model is seen in a few different ways. The toe box uses an additional layer of like thin rubber that actually has a soft underside to cover the fly in it. And it also supports the only obvious Nike branding on the sneaker. Uh, there, there is some branding that appears on the tongue or technically where the tongue should be with this, like this real tiny small Nike swoosh that you can actually take off so you'll easily miss it if you aren't looking for it. On the toe cap, you have a full piece of transparent plastic that is actually pretty thick and will definitely protect the fly knit and the rubber piece that's underneath. My thought is that this is more of an aesthetic play than functional, but it could also be something Nike did to seal in the fly knit and the overlay at the toe. Um, and if all that isn't enough, the heel pool actually features a loop strand of fly wire that helps to hammer home that whole outdoorsy vibe of the shoe because it looks like a piece of paracord sticking out of the back. When it comes to comfort, Nike wanted to make sure you felt every little bit of the react by removing the sock liner and the strobe board. In a sense, your foot is sitting directly on top of the Nike React midsole and it's definitely soft and comfortable. So you do get a bit of a sinking sensation into the shoe when you first put them on, but that goes away pretty quickly as you walk around like within like five minutes. The heel to toe transition though, that's super obvious. It makes sense when you look at how much foam is in the heel, but you can really feel it when you put the shoes on. It's all It almost like propels you forward because of the drop from the heel to the toe. Now that is neither good nor bad, but it's definitely something you should consider if that factors into how you buy sneakers. One thing I was concerned about was the heat in the shoe because the upper is so layered with fly knit panels. You actually start to wonder if that heat is going to have anywhere to escape or get trapped in the shoe. But I did notice that they have these two neoprene panels on the medial side and the lateral side right about the midfoot and right where the arch of your foot is and they're thin enough to let a lot of air flow in and out. So taking everything into account the bigger question is who is this sneaker for and and how should it be used? Be because it isn't a performance shoe. We, all, we always have to be cautious with the real world use of something like this because I think style wise, we see the shoe as something a little more daring and adventurous than what we're used to. The, the ISPA team took existing tech and styles and fused them into an urban outdoorsy type sneaker with a major focus on comfort. And while I do see myself wearing them in that way, if I want something that I would say it looks a little crazier than your average sneaker. I do think 
that I would probably take these on a light hike or maybe even a, like a light workout. Because of the thick midsole, you aren't going to have the feel you would from a traditional like workout shoe. But if that isn't a big deal, then this offers, I would say, a unique look and style that breaks the mold and offers the outdoorsy vibes without compromising the comfort or the relative durability, especially with this weird toe box. So as far as sizing goes, I'm usually between an 11 and 11 and a half, and I pick these up in an 11 and a half. Um, they feel a little big, but I, I, it's not bad. I could have picked up an 11 and I would have been fine. I'll probably end up taking these back and trying to get myself an 11 just for a, a more secure snug fit. So yeah, those are my thoughts on the Nike ISPA Overreact Flyknit. Uh, it's a very interesting shoe. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy and I'll see you next time. Peace.